Hello and welcome everyone to our presentation Adaptive Boundary Extension for Interrupt Prediction. My name is Nicolas Horst and the co-authors are Priyanka Das and Matthias Wien from RWTH Aachen University. So I first want to give a brief motivation. So if we're streaming omnidirectional videos, they're typically displayed as a viewport that is steered by the user and um, some uh, regions of the video are less likely to be seen. So we could now provide different quality options and then uh, adaptively choose between them. But um, for this we need independently decodable regions in the video and that's why independently decodable sub-pictures were introduced in versatile video coding to, to make this an easier process. And the method um, has some, some problems because it now introduces these sub-picture boundaries inside the picture and usually you would have them on the edge where artifacts are not so much noticed but now you have them in the focus of the user and this becomes really a problem and um, that's why we're trying to improve the uh, boundary extension mechanism. So as an outline I want to talk about the boundary extension problem first then uh, tell you something about adaptive boundary extension, a derived approach and a signaled approach, give some details of the developed uh, method, and show you results and in the end give a conclusion and an outlook. Mm, boundary extension is used when we do interprediction at picture um, boundary areas. So um, Let's say we have um, this, this uh, is the uh, picture to be coded, this is the reference picture and this content here matches this content very well. Uh, but we need a prediction signal for the whole block so the information for this part is missing. And what we're now doing is we're doing an extension of the boundary so um, we extend the picture beyond its, um, its boundaries and um, to not restrict the motion vectors anymore. And the method that's used in VVC and also previous standards to do this is we do a global extension of a sub-picture and then we do nearest neighbor padding. So um, basically we um, extend the border pixels um, perpendicular to the boundary. Adaptive boundary extension is now um, an extension that's derived per block. So um, we're not having a global extension anymore, but rather an extension uh, per block. And here several prediction algorithms are possible. Our work focuses on linear prediction. So we're using intra-angular prediction algorithms. Um, but now we're having multiple prediction algorithms and those need either a selection process on the decoder side or explicit signaling. Uh, one approach to derive those motion vectors was raised in a call for proposal for VVC and um, they use, um, so it was um, proposed by Fraunhofer HHI and they also used intra-angular prediction algorithms and they derived the prediction angle from the um, block content. So um, if we take a look at the um, pixels here, um, at the pixel lines um, that are near the boundary, we can um, by um, checking for the correlation of the pixels, we can derive an angle from that and then simply use this to um, apply a boundary extension. And so this uh, doesn't need an extra signaling, but uh, we also not always um, derive the optimal angle in terms of prediction error or uh, in terms of continuity across sub-picture boundaries, for example. And um, 
So a signal approach now um, it allows to to have a, a better angle and also um, maybe create a better continuity across sub picture boundaries. And um, uh, we um, approach this as follows. So we're first doing an extension search that is performed for every block um, based on a mean squared error. Then um, at the uh, end of a CTU in the bitstream, we send all the um, extension modes that we need, but only for blocks where we actually need an extension mode. And this number can be derived at the decoder side from the motion vectors that are um, already transmitted. So this unfortunately creates a parsing dependency that is something which we're going to work on in the future. Um, signaling of one extension mode is now done um, by first sending an enabled flag which says if the method is actually used. If it then is used we send a sign flag that um, simply gives the sign of the angle and after that um, we send an uh, index of the used angle. So we define a set of, um, of different angles and then we simply we send an index with a fixed uh, length binarization. And so this is really a first simple signaling scheme that we went for to demonstrate this successfully um, in the test model. And uh, we're also gonna uh, refine that and improve that in the future. So the angles that are used are displayed uh, in this figure or the, the different sets that we, that we tried. So because signaling causes an increase in rate and also the more angle options we have, the more expensive the signaling gets. So we choose four different sets of angles for the experiments. And um, like the set you can see up here, this comprises the um, HEVC intra angles and uh, you need to spend three bits for the signaling of the index and then we um, reduce the set to only have two, one or even zero bits for signaling the index. Uh, of course the sign, uh, the sign bit uh, needs to be transmitted. So for the simulation setup, we um, used uh, the VVC test model VGM8 as an anchor in the low delay P configuration. And we disabled some advanced uh, intra-prediction tools uh, that are listed on the slides. Um, uh, for example, the sublog based prediction methods and uh, to, yeah, to av really avoid interaction uh, with this um, and to have a first um, impression on the on the the scheme that we we implemented, um, and we used different sequences. So we choose chairlift right and skateboard in lot from the um, JVET common testing conditions um, on 360 videos, um, and we uh, also used harbor biking two and kite flight walking two which were candidates for the verification test of VVC and they all um, have camera motion um, to have a high number of motion vectors that reach over sub picture boundaries so we really can measure an effect there and uh, the sub picture setup is taken from uh, a core experiment on tile set boundary handling so we converted the sequences into cube map format with a resolution of 4608 times 3072 and then we went for a 384 by 384 sub picture partitioning which resulted in 96 um, sub pictures so the sub pictures are then uh, 3 by 3 um, uh, CTUs in this uh, configuration So um, the uh, results are listed in the table here and um, we see bit rate numbers for the different approaches. 
um, and the, the numbers are not that high. This is also because uh, we the method don't affect so uh, such a huge area on the videos so we are only touching the the boundary areas here so this um, has to be kept in mind and additionally we're also using a simple signaling scheme here and we can see in in this column here we see the derived approach we see the signals approach and the numbers are average over all sub pictures and the selected columns here um, we do a selection process where we um, do a selection between the method and the anchor based on the uh, BD rate number uh, so we get some improvement from this uh, and the combined approach uh, does the selection um, for derived signal approach and anchor so this is not really feasible in an encoding scenario because we would need to calculate BD rate numbers first but it emulates a selection process here and the upper limit number we um, so these are theoretical numbers where we um, this is basically the signaled approach uh, but we don't um, take into account the bitrate that is spent for um, the um, signaling the uh, extension modes. So this is only a theoretical number here. But we can see that if we choose the derived approach, um, we, we don't always get the, uh, the best angle here since we, we can do better if we're really doing a, a, a search. Uh, so this can be seen um, on these numbers. But unfortunately, uh, if we now have to signal, um, signal this, then we end up not gaining anymore. So if we're then doing a selection process, we can see that we, we can gain on um, some sub pictures, um, but we're, uh, on average, we're not better than the uh, derived approach here. And for a visual comparison, um, I took an example here from Harbor Biking 2, where you can see here in the middle here, we can see um, a, such a sub picture boundary here. So we're, we, we haven't applied any um, deblocking de de on this. Um, and you can really see here with the anchor method we're getting a discontinuity here um, caused by this uh, perpendicular um, continuation of the edge pixels which we don't get uh, with our method so um, this is really something where we can improve uh, visually um, with uh, such a method to yeah, give now a conclusion uh, and also give some, some outlook um, we, we have the possibility with this method to, to match boundary regions of neighboring sub pictures um, in the encoding process um, to have better continuation for example and so this is something that we haven't implemented yet but this is something that's really now possible with such a signaled approach um, the upper limit numbers show some promising rate savings when using angular interprediction um, uh, and the signaled approach gives improvement on some sub pictures but it currently does not outperform the derived approach in general that's mainly because the um, signaling cost is too high and um, that's why we're going for a more elaborated signaling in the future we thought about maybe doing something like most probable modes or a grouping of modes etc and also like doing a reason based activation or deactivation of the method could improve results here thanks for your attention and i'm looking forward to your questions